Turns out, particles can be sent backward or forward in time, rewinding or fast-forwarding their states. Photons can act like they leave a cloud before they even enter it, making time seem to run in reverse. And scientists can make waves retrace their steps as if energy is undoing what it already did. Scientists just detected something disturbing in time. Let's talk about it. How's this for a crazy discovery? Scientists have found a way to reverse time for particles. Not for people, just photons and electrons. A team from the Austrian Academy of Sciences, including Miguel Navescos and physicist Philip Walther, have shown that they can actually rewind or fast forward the age of individual particles like photons. Using a device called a quantum switch, the researchers sent photons on a path and then brought them back to the exact state they were in before the journey. Walther said, it was one of the most difficult experiments we've ever built for a single photon, but the result was clear. The photon returned to its original state, like hitting rewind on a video without ever watching it. They also figured out how to speed up particles. The Vascos explained, to make a system age 10 years in one year, you must get the other nine years from somewhere. In practice, they used 10 identical systems borrowing tiny amounts of time from nine of them to make the 10th age 10 times faster than usual. I don't even really know what that means. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this as best as I can. The goal here though is to make quantum computers more efficient. Quantum computers are made of tiny particles that store information. These particles are super sensitive. If anything disturbs them, like a tiny change in temperature or light, the information can get scrambled or lost. So this could be a way to rewind these particles back to how they were before the mistake happened. Almost like giving the computer a reset button. Scientists at the University of Toronto found something really weird about light. Tiny particles of light, called photons, can act like they're moving backward in time when they go through a cloud of extremely cold atoms. Basically, it can look like a photon leaves the cloud before it even enters it. Back in 2017, researchers Afraim Steinberg and Josiah Sinclair were trying to see how long atoms stay energized after they absorb light. When they ran the experiment, some weird stuff happened. Sometimes photons went straight through the cloud, but the atoms still reacted. Other times, photons that got absorbed seemed to come out again before the atoms had calmed down. Steinberg explained it like this. The measuring device ends up in a mixed state, partly seeing nothing and partly seeing some energy, making it look like the photon's time inside the atom is negative and that a, quote, negative time delay may seem paradoxical but the clock hand would, under certain circumstances, move backward rather than forward. This doesn't mean you now time is actually running backward, the photons aren't traveling to the past, it's just the strange rules of quantum physics making it look that way. Basically, at the tiniest scales, time does not always follow the normal path that we would expect it to. Physicists in New York just recently found a way to make a wave behave as if it's moving backward through time. They used a special strip of metal with electronics called a metamaterial. When they sent an electromagnetic wave through it, the wave didn't just bounce back, it retraced its steps. Best way I can get this across is to imagine screaming into a tunnel and hearing it, your voice return, not just echoing, but as if it's traveling back through the tunnel in reverse, undoing every movement it made. That's, I guess, sort of what the wave does. Its energy and direction are flipped, so that it's almost like the wave is undoing itself. It's important to know this doesn't actually let anything travel faster than light or send messages to the past. The wave isn't carrying new information backward. It's just a strange effect of how energy moves through this engineered material. Neuroscientists found that our brains might have their own version of this though. Neuroscientists that were studying epilepsy patients found something they call time cells. We all have them. They're basically neurons that fire in a pattern to keep track of when things happen. Even when there's no sound or light to guide them, these cells can still replay events in order, almost like rewinding a memory. So yeah, in the lab, scientists can make waves physically retrace their steps. And in our heads, the brain can do something similar, running time backward in thought. We usually think time moves forward. What happens first causes what comes next. But neuroscientist Dr. Julia Mossbridge 
has been studying retro causality, which is basically the possibility that stuff in the future can affect what's happening right now, saying each event of a different duration may have its own distinct signature woven through the universal calculation of space-time. Okay, part of her work looks at something called CADS or CADS, causally ambiguous duration sorting, which shows that some events seem to get sorted before the outcome is even decided. Delayed choice experiments in quantum physics have shown similar weird stuff, where cause and effect don't always follow the order you think they would. Before anyone freaks out here though, these weird time effects only happen in super controlled lab experiments, usually using tiny particles like photons or atoms. The scientists have to cool things down to nearly absolute zero and use lasers and magnets to control them. What well, looks like time moving backward is really just how the math and measurements work out at the tiny scale. But still, the future might have a small say in what's happening now. Of course, more experiments need to be done, but scientists are pretty intrigued. In Antarctica, researchers were using the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA, sending instruments up on balloons 40 kilometers above the ice to catch radio signals from neutrinos. Neutrinos, these ghostly particles that can pass through anything, literally a billion could be zipping through your body, yes you specifically, every second without you even noticing. But Anita picked up radio waves coming from below the ice at crazy steep angles, about 30 degrees under the surface. Norm Any signal like that should have been blocked or absorbed by thousands of kilometers of rock. The radio waves that we detected were at a really steep angles. They should have been undetectable, said Stephanie Weissel from Penn State. When the team compared their results with other experiments, nothing lined up. These weren't normal neutrinos. They were something else entirely. Some have speculated it could have been dark matter, but in Weitzel's words, my guess is that some interesting radio propagation effects occur near ice and also near the horizon that I don't fully understand. We haven't been able to find any of those yet either." End quote. For now, it's just a complete mystery. Signals coming up from beneath the Antarctic ice with no real explanation. Our planet's magnetic field is what keeps harmful cosmic radiation and solar storms from burning us all to death. It's been doing its job for billions of years, but scientists have started noticing something weird. For over a decade, the European Space Agency's swarm satellites been measuring Earth's magnetic field. They found a weak spot over the South Atlantic called the South Atlantic Anomaly. This isn't new, it was first spotted in the 1800s, but now it's shifting and expanding. In this area, our protective magnetic field is significantly weaker than any other region on Earth. Satellites flying through it have picked up interference and there's higher radiation than usual. Some scientists are wondering if this is connected to a magnetic pole reversal, something that hasn't happened in 780 thousand years. The next one probably won't happen for a thousand years, but it could be a sign that changes are starting deep in Earth's core. For now, it doesn't pose any real danger to people on the surface, but researchers are keeping a close eye on it. We're trying to uncover a cause for this weakness. Is it a temporary shift or part of the magnetic field recalibrating itself, one ESA scientist said. Time is not as steady as we like to think. It actually slows down near massive objects. This is called gravitational time dilation, and it comes straight from Einstein's theory of general relativity. The basic idea is that gravity isn't just a force pulling objects together. It actually warps space and time. The stronger the gravity, the more time itself gets stretched out. In practical terms, a clock sitting on Earth's surface ticks a little bit slower than a clock on a satellite high above. The difference is pretty minuscule, milliseconds over years, but it's enough that engineers have to account for it when designing GPS systems, for example. If they didn't, your phone's location could be off by kilometers in a single day. And it's not just satellites. Near an extremely massive object, like a neutron star or a black hole, I drop a clock there, and from far away, it would appear almost frozen in time. Gravitational time dilation is proof that time, as we often think of it, is not universal. It's actually tied to gravity and mass, which is pretty trippy. Atomic clocks are the most accurate clocks humans have ever built. They measure the tiny, super consistent jumps electrons make inside atoms, usually cesium or strontium. Every jump is like a perfectly timed tick. This makes them incredibly accurate, so accurate that over billions of years, 
They, they barely drift a second, but even these so-called perfect clocks aren't actually perfect. Scientists have discovered something called quantum jitter. The atoms actually have a little randomness to them, so their ticks aren't exactly the same every time. So at this point, we just can't make a completely flawless clock. To get around it, scientists are experimenting with entangling the atoms. That's a way of linking them so they're tiny errors would actually cancel each other out, making a super clock that's even more accurate. But the point is, even at the tiniest scales, time just is not perfectly clean. All that said though, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, next time. Ooh.